and welcome to Live from the Studio, brought to you by Audible. We are live streaming to Picture Houses, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter and Instagram pages from the Sundance Film Festival London 2023, which starts today! <laughs> Thank you, everyone. And how exciting, on uh, live from the studio, we are interviewing a cross-section of everyone involved in Sundance, from the filmmakers to the US Sundance team to industry partners, um, lending their expertise like BFI and screen skills. Uh, this show is for anyone who is interested in independent film, the future of film, celebrating film. We are here for you and have some amazing guests for you. Um, I'll just give you a quick flag up on tomorrow's show. We have art legend Anton Corbin discussing his new documentary, Squaring the Circle. Greg Araki, who is celebrated in Rep this year with three unmissable screenings, including never before seen in the UK, his 1987 debut, Three Bewildered People in the Night. Uh, New York fashion legend, Bethan Hardison, with her co-director, Frederick Cheng, yes, exactly, um, are going to be here discussing their documentary, Is Invisible Beauty, and director, Andrew Durham, will be discussing Fairyland, and Mia Bays and Sean Harrison from the BFI Filmmaking Fund will be here. So please do send in your questions to hashtag Sundance London. We will read them out, and we will name check you. And so, with uh, oh, and so today's program, of course, <laughs> I will be handing over very shortly to our esteemed producer Wendy Mitchell, um, who will be interviewing the Sundance team from the U.S. And following Wendy, we will be hearing from Screen Skills, which is an incredible organisation. That if you want to get working in film, I suggest you listen to what these guys can offer. We then have director Charlotte Regan and producer Theo Barrowclough whose debut feature, Scrapper, is not only the Sundance Grand Jury Prize winner dramatic, but our opening film tonight. 
Woo! What a show! So, without further ado, I'm going to introduce you to Wendy. So, Wendy, if I could bring you over and hand the mic, and then I'm going to leave you to take over, and I'm going to tell you when to wrap up. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Flick. We're so happy to be back with Live from the Studio. We're so happy. It's been so buzzy in this building today for the kickoff of Sundance Film Festival London 2023. Uh, just the energy in here is great. Scrapper's coming up later tonight. Um, we're delighted, as people may be watching know, that Sundance London is a very special collaboration between Sundance Institute, Sundance Film Festival USA, and Picture House. So we have our amazing crew from Sundance USA here with us today. I'd like to welcome them. We have the CEO, Joanna Vicent. We have the incoming uh, festival director and director of public programming. It's Eugene Hernandez. Yay. And we have director of programming, Kem Utani, please. So. Uh, Joanna, you were here last year. It was, that was your first Sundance London, I think. That was my first Sundance London, and it was my first Sundance festival since I've been in this position. Yes. In person. Amazing. Yes. So, yeah, you were here last year. Can you s just say a few words about, you know, how you found it, what was special, and what you're hoping for this year? I mean, again, it was just so special to have the festival in person. I love this location. I mean, we the films that were here, it just felt like all of a sudden everything that we had worked for was finally, you know, kind of manifesting mm. in person. So it was very, very special to, to be here and uh, excited to, to be here again this year. Great. We're glad you're back. Um, anything special you're looking forward to this year or just the whole thing, the whole shebang? Just the whole thing. I mean, yeah. we, we love being here, bringing a selection of films from the festival and just having the opportunity to connect, to meet new people and develop audiences for independent film. Great. Yeah. Let's come to Eugene next. Um, Eugene, I know you're a big Anglophile maybe. You love London as a city. You've only been working at Sundance now for eight months, so this is your first Sundance London. Yeah, I get to be the newbie this year. Yes. Um, and I have to do it again. We're gonna cue some photos. Eugene loves this. Um, are we gonna be able to see them up here? Okay. Yes, no, no, that's a hypnosis. Can we see Eugene at Sundance in 1993? There we, oh, oh God, there yeah. we go. There's Eugene at Sundance in 1993. Eugene, Sundance has been such a huge part of your life since 1993 when you just went as a film lover. Yeah, I mean, that's... Uh... Um, what is it? feel like to now be working at Sundance, this festival that's meant so much to you over the years? Yeah, I mean, it's a dream. It's, it's that photo that you showed is me at Sundance. My very first Sundance was in 1993. Um, I went really out of curiosity. I had, I had been watching and, and learning about so many movies that were coming from Sundance, uh, whether that was like films by Todd Haynes or Jenny Livingston or Quentin Tarantino, Steven Soderbergh. And, it was a foundational moment in my career, starting of my career kind of, it really um, invited me to dig deeper and learn more about independent cinema. Mm -hmm. So to be 30 years later in this, in, in this role is, is just, it's, a, it's an absolute dream, it's truly meaningful, and um, I just believe so deeply in, in Sundance's commitment to international discovery. Mm -hmm. So to be here, be here in London with all of you is really special. I love the first day of a festival. Mm -hmm. It's just like first day of school all over again. Is it? <laughs> Maybe people. I didn't know what to wear, yes. Yeah, exactly. not quite sure, getting settled, you know, yeah. still kind of getting your bearings, meeting folks. Finding um, out what's located where. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I've, I've only been in this venue once before. I was able to watch a movie here a bunch of years ago, and I just, um, thanks to our friends at Picture House, because I think it's just such a beautiful space, and I hope folks who are here and those who are watching at home also will have a chance to, uh, to just come down and see a movie okay. this weekend. And we have to, now, can we cue the other photo? Oh boy, you, you've really done I know, deep I, I, I here can't, in this I can't resist. Because this is just to explain that this photo was of me and Eugene about 20 years ago. Because Eugene Hernandez gave me my first job in the film business working oh at IndieWire. There we are. Look, it's a strange photo. 
Yeah. I think somebody, you know, who might have been inebriated took the photo. I'm wondering. It I, looks cropped I have a at feeling a straight. I, I know. Uh, we might even know who that we person is. We might even is. know that person. But um, it Back feels like a little reunion. Me Wendy and, and I worked together. Wendy and I worked together at IndieWire in my couple chapters ago yeah. in my career. Me too. A couple of chapters of ago. Wire. Yeah. And um, Wendy, before um, before she moved across the pond to uh, anchor herself here in the UK, uh, worked with us in New York and. It's nice to be back together. It's so again. nice Kicking to be back the together the again. I tour. had to get the gang back together and show the photo. Thank you, Wendy. Um, Kim is our real Sundance London veteran. So this is our tenth edition of Sundance London. Um, how has it evolved, Kim? Is it very different than when it first started? Well, I actually wasn't here for the <gasps> very first Sundance London. Okay. That were out in the the well, maybe we don't even name location. it. No, yes. No. I think what what is relevant is that we are here in Picture House Central, which is the best place for a festival to be held. Um, it's it's been a fantastic run. We're in our tenth year. Mm. Um, and I think each year it just gets stronger and stronger. Mm. Last year was a real turning point, I think, for the for the festival because of you um, and Thank the you. industry mm. program that you put together, which was so successful mm. that we had to do it again this year. It's even bigger and better yeah. this year, and uh, and that on top of the the yeah the selection of films mm. and all the filmmakers we brought in, it's. It's a great festival. It's, yeah, thank you. I think this is going to be the best. I came as an audience member for most of those 10 years, and only last year started working. And I honestly can say this is going to be the best one. I I'm agree. promising. Yeah. The I number, agree. the films, the filmmakers, the industry, having you all here is just good energy. Come on down to Picture House Central. Have the duck chips while you come to live duck from chips. the Duck chips are my top tip at the, at the restaurant. Um, Joanna, why is London a good fit? Because Sundance could go anywhere in the world, they know the Sundance brand, but why, why is London a good place to have Sundance offshoot? I mean, I, I know why it is a good fit <laughs> now. I mean, for us, just, I mean, sometimes people associate Sundance with American independent mm. film, but really we are a global festival and it's all about discovering new voices. And, you know, films from the UK do really well at Sundance. Mm. So I think it's like just a love relationship that we have with the filmmakers from the UK and love the idea of bringing films here and, and, and really opening up mm. uh, audiences to, you know, just see films uh, that were at this year's festival mm. in Utah. Mm. Yeah. And yeah, Eugene. And I was just gonna say London. how amazing to have a terrific film like Charlotte Regan's Scrapper um, which was such a hit at this year's festival mm. to be here for opening night. It's just mm. it's such such a nice uh, continuation of yeah. our ability to celebrate the film. And yeah, because they do really well out in Utah, and then it's the UK premiere here, and they get to have more friends and family, even though we're there, and already coming back as a Sundance hit. It's amazing. Yeah. And in this space, I think there's just like, uh, keep plugging the opportunity <laughs> to come down to Picture House Central, because I think it's just the intimacy and the opportunity to kind of connect in a in a more, um, in, a, in a kind of smaller and, and, and um, just a really special way. Mm. I think that's really nice. Yeah. Kim, um, what's it gonna be like? You are gonna be hosting some Q and A's with Greg Araki, Indie Kingpin, um, including a, it's a newly restored version of the Doom Generation, which I, I'm so happy we got this in screen one at Picture House Central. It is gonna look phenomenal. Greg is gonna be here with us. But you actually worked on the film, and you know Greg very well. So what's it going to be like for you to be part of the Doom Generation screening? You know, it's a, I have to admit, it's a little bit strange, because this, is so, this was a part of my life in 1995 or something, um, when I was Greg Araki's assistant on this film. Um, and it was, the, the shoot itself was, um, as weird and crazy as the film mm. that you will see on screen. But I have to say the restored version is incredible. It mm. looks amazing, it is beautiful, and it is the cut of the film that Greg, Greg wants. wants everybody to see. Yeah. So, and then, and then we're also showing uh, Mysterious Skin and then his very first film, 
uh, which was a huge influence on me, uh, a film called Three Bewildered People in the Night. Yeah, And I think as Flick mentioned, this is the first time Three Bewildered People in the Night has ever been seen publicly in the UK. It's the first screening, we think. That- that is incredible. Yes. And so, and it's such a rare opportunity for everybody to see this on a big yeah. screen. So, yeah. Come and out. to have Greg here with us. Exactly. So, I know all of us um, last night saw some, uh, quite a few jet lagged people. You're all looking fresh and not jet lagged, but, you know, some jet lagged filmmakers. There were some filmmakers who came in straight from the airport to a press breakfast this morning. How, you know, why is it so important that we get these filmmakers here? Eugene, I mean, why is that so special? Well, I mean, I think, I think what's, what's special about Sundance, first and foremost, is that the artist, the filmmaker, is, is first. And I think for us to have the opportunity to, to bring such, a, such a, a tremendous representation of this year's festival to London, to actually engage with audiences, we think a lot about and we talk a lot about how can we, how can we invite filmmakers to the festival and invite their films and really try to find as many ways to be that bridge to an audience for these films and filmmakers. So this is a a continuation of that Mm. journey. I mean, you look through the list of the dozen films that are playing, the feature films and the short films. It's so exciting to see this this cross-section. You know, we talked about Scrapper, we talked about Greg Araki. I mean, I'm just so excited for a London audience to see Past Lives. I mean, Celine Song's film was just uh, one one of many really... Um, beautiful hits at this year's festival. Mm. And to have Celine here um, is just, mm. if, if you get a chance, I know it's very popular, but if you can figure out how to squeeze Maybe into that Maybe there'll be theater, a ticket return tomorrow and you can see it if you don't I already have one. highly recommend it. Yeah. It's a beautiful movie. One I, of the, one of the you're great not allowed to really have a favorite, but I can say Past Lives is my favorite film of the year because I didn't program this festival. I can just say that as an audience person who sees a lot of films. Um, and it's just also wonderful, like Celine... She's, you know, going around the world with festivals, but she's so happy to be here. And it doesn't, you know, I think sometimes you can feel like, oh, some of these film workers are just like, what city am I in? You know, good night, Boston. But it's, um, people are just really excited. And I think that's down to also Sundance. That I think it was, it was probably Celine that said to me, or Charlotte Regan, Sundance is the gift that keeps on giving and giving. I, you know, I can't believe I'm here again. You know, Sundance London. So yeah, Joanna, what would you say about how you hope filmmakers can embrace a little Sundance? <laughs> you know, artists, filmmakers has all, have always been at the center of everything that we do. Mm-hmm. And I think there's something so special about like kind of unveiling your film at Sundance for the first time. And so that, that's such a special experience. But then you're also just doing your film. Mm. And all of a sudden, you come to London, you have the opportunity to meet the other filmmakers mm. and to actually enjoy the experience because you're not selling it or mm. you know, um, doing press for the film. So really amazing opportunity to, to really live the experience of, of being at mm. Sundance. So, yeah. yeah, I mean, one thing I loved last night, we just had a little welcome for some of the filmmakers who had flown in early. And Celine Song was there and excited. and said, oh, can you like reintroduce me to Nicole Holofson who's over there? And they just had a nice moment that I know Utah is so busy and they are doing all the press and buying and selling of films. And it's, you know, so maybe even a lot, it's a lot busier than they are here. So I, I know some of the filmmakers here are going to even watch each other's films. Isn't that a treat? Exactly. And I think that's the, the wonderful thing about Sundance London is it's a continuation of the community that we form in Utah, mm. we, and a, a continuation of a community that is just um, a, a, this tight-knit group of mm. independent filmmakers, and the idea that we can also sort of cross generations mm. with our filmmakers who are in this program is, mm. is an exciting opportunity for mm. us all. And for us personally, I think we're, we are so busy during the festival, too, that we don't often get to meet all of our filmmakers even during you know, our January yeah. festival. So I was very excited to meet Leo Mejil, who is the star of Mutt um, t- this morning, and who yeah. is an amazing actor. And mm. So yeah, it's, it's, it's fun for us, yeah. too. It's that, that, that friendly vibe, like we're at a party in somebody's kitchen, as we said last night, or this is in somebody's living room. Um, so yeah, I would really recommend people, even if you don't have a badge or a ticket, you can come to Picture Central and sit in this restaurant 
buy the duck chips. I'm not on commission, but they're really <laughs> excellent. Other food is available. And just sort of sit and listen to amazing people come, coming through and see filmmakers. So, you know, this is totally free. Pop into Picture House Central and come experience the Sundance Vibe and get involved. Be like Eugene, Sundance, Utah, 1993. Finding your, your tribe. Any final thoughts, anyone? Eugene, I can I mean, see I, I something. Think I think you just can't go wrong with anything you choose this yeah. weekend. It's a really strong program. And what I often encourage at festivals is just to, to pick something you might not, that might not be the obvious choice. Yeah. Just, just follow, your, follow your curiosity and, and you will be rewarded. It's a really strong program. Yeah, also because it's such a tightly curated program. I also recommend that people do always check out the docs. Yes. Because Sundance docs are really special, mm. and we have a selection of three, four, that, four. I think, yeah. And um, yeah, yeah, so that's the, that's yeah, that's a good worth. reminder because there's you know maybe it's not the biggest star in the world you know involved in a documentary production, right. but those are amazing films. Yeah, as Eugene said, just come to the box office, see what they've got a ticket for, and just go try it. That's the Sundance vibe. Agreed. Yeah. Thank you so much for being here celebrating with us. That's so important. It's, you know, the whole reason this festival works. So thank you for being here. Right. Have thank fun. You. And we're going to now take a little two-minute break, and Flick will be back. Hello again, everyone. Oh, huge thank you to Wendy and the Sundance team. If we could have another big round of applause for those guys. Thank you so much. <laughs> and also, big apologies to everyone on Instagram, because unfortunately we can't put the cards up. It's not our fault, it's Instagram's fault. Uh, so you just saw people's shuffling around there on the, on the stage. But uh, next year we'll come back bigger and better for Instagram. But for now, I'd like to introduce you all to the wonder that is Screen Skills. And here to tell us all about it are Celia Small, who's the film trainee finder lead at Screen Skills, and Screen Skill beneficiary Sharon Darney. Is that correct? Is that, yes, that's yeah. perfect. Spot on. Well done. Thank you. So, um, Sharon, uh, 
Celia, sorry, let me find my questions before I go any further. How excited are you for Screen Skills to be part of Sundance Film Festival London 2023? We are extremely excited. Thank you so much for having us today. It's, it's so exciting to be here on the first day of the festival as well to hit off with a bang. And I know that the guys were saying beforehand, but it, it, the vibe today is really buzzing here, isn't it? And it, you could, it's really nice to hear people chatting in the corners, going up to screenings. So it's fantastic to be here and we're really, really pleased. Um, it definitely seems to be the, uh, the hub for filmmakers in the kind of UK and coming from abroad as well. Um, and it's great for us to be here to talk to people about how we can potentially support them in their in their dreams as well. Absolutely. And where can people expect to find you when yeah Yes, so today, um, colleagues were in the luncheon today. We're obviously here, and we've got colleagues that will be staying around this afternoon. Um, we have got some sponsored drink, drinks in the members' bar from five till six, and we'll all be there. Um, and I believe uh, we've invited people that we work with all the time, uh, producers, line, line producers and production managers, and I believe that uh, ticket holders can also make their way there as well. And can I add, it's free drinks, isn't yes. it? Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's the key bit that to add in, yeah. Exactly, yes, always good to know. And um, so can you explain what Screen Skills is and how Sundance Film Festival London is the perfect festival for you to showcase Screen Skills and also what you do? Yes, yeah. yes, sure thing. So Screen Skills is the uh, leading industry body for, for skills in the screen industries um, that covers film, TV, which covers children's high-end TV and unscripted. And we also work VFX, animation and games. And um, we work to kind of offer insight and opportunities for people that are looking looking to one, get into the screen industries and to develop once they're in it as well. And it's really important for us to say that everything we do is industry led. So we get business intelligence from the industry. We're constantly talking to them about our programs, our training, the events we run are all led by industry, letting us know what they want and then we provide to them as well. So we do a range of programs that run within those departments that I just talked about. Um, uh, we do entry levels such as Trainee Finder, we do mid-level uh, programs um, such as Make a Move, Film Forward, and then we've also got our, our bursaries that are running throughout the whole year, and we've got free e-learning on our website that absolutely every single person should be doing as well. I can't recommend it enough, because I, I, I hadn't heard of Screen Skills, so um, when I heard that they were coming and, I, and were happy to be interviewed by me, because not everybody is, um, I just thought oh, I'll, I'll Google it, and I saw that there was a um, an opportunity to do a free thing in subconscious um, bias training. Yeah, yeah, subconscious, and it was really interesting to see just how biased my subconscious is. Horrifying. Yeah, and then you yeah. second guess everything, don't you, as well? Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's worth saying that we are completely UK-wide as well. It's fantastic to obviously be in this venue today, um, but the e-learning is free. A lot of the training that we do is free, um, and we want to be there and be kind of reactive to what the industry needs as well. And my role, I sit within the film team, um, and I help um, I helped run Film Trainee Finder, which is entry level, um, and it's about getting um, people uh, the chance to get their foot in the door, which is hopefully through paid placements on productions. And we also run uh, Make a Move and Film Forward, which is that mid-level career, uh, which is all about helping those step up. And we have our continuous progression development programs, which again, are all about stepping up or even transferers from other industries that are really keen to get into the screen industries as well. So Sharon, coming to you, You're, you are an alumni of Screen Skills. So can you tell us what your personal story is and how you found them and you know, how it helps you? So my personal story was very long and arduous <laughs> and I sort of went to film school, thought I would conquer the world. Oh, it and sounds like a back. perfect Sundance film. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah and, then I, and then I sort of was confident. I learned so much, I was ready to show the world my talent and I couldn't get a job. So I was unemployed, which was very disheartening and upsetting, but I persevered, believed in myself, and six years later managed to finally get a place. But it was also, I, so I went to Creative Access first, and I managed to get a place from there, and then I started looking at other schemes which were there, and then Creative Access uh, helped me sort of like get my CV in order, then I could apply for Screen Skills, because that's like, they also told me about Screen Skills, and I started like Googling it, and also chatting to other people about it, and that's how I managed to get my foot in and sort of tailor my way about what I wanted. But with screen skills, it's also like different um, areas you can apply for, and because they've got like the job spec, so you can have a read down, because I applied to be an AD, I thought right, this is what I really want to be, because sometimes you don't know when you're starting out, so I tailored my sort of like CV and the form to being an AD, and then I, luckily I got accepted. 
That's fantastic. And have you been working now as an AD? Yes, and I love it. I really, really enjoy it. Um, I started off as a runner, so that was like three to four years of like hit the ground running. And then when I sort of stepped up and I was learning a bit, I managed to contact uh, Screens Girls and say, you know what, I think there needs to be some stuff out there regarding third ADs and telling us what we're doing. And luckily, yes. They're, they're, yes, it's because you can like get thrown in and they're, they're so good with everything and they always appreciate feedback, do Screens Girls. And then I've been doing some of their courses which are online, and um, yeah, so uh, I love, love what I do. And I'm so that's great. Up. So you were able to help Screen Skills tailor the courses that you felt were needed for, to, pro to progress as an AD? Yes, I did, because they're so open and approachable, and they always want feedback, and they've rung me a couple of times saying, okay, so we're thinking about doing a bursary for this, what do you think the limit should be, or what do you think would be helpful? So, um, and then I just thought, you know what, this is what I feel was lacking. And I sort of asked them, say, no, maybe you can think about doing that. Then we can just make the industry more streamlined. It's better for ADs because everyone always comes to us and wants us to know everything. So we can be better prepared for when we step up as well, which is a huge jump from being a runner to a third AD. Yes. I, I will say quickly also, so Sharon was on our uh, training funder program and had a fantastic year with us. Yes. And now we invite her back to interview the new trainees that we're going to take on. So it's fantastic to still work with her and see her career be fantastic as well. How brilliant to be able to give back as well and pass on the knowledge that was given to you. I think because it took me so long to get in, uh, I really wanted to give other people that opportunity that I didn't have and offer advice and tell them what to do and make sure that they're, they're ready for it. So it's lovely giving back. I think that's it's so important as you go up to give that hand down and, and pull them up as well. And I've been so, Screen Schools have been so generous, so kind with me. They always invite me to things and there's always networking events and I'm always, in, it's like a, a family for life. Once you're in, they really do look after you from the beginning of your career and as you progress forward. And that's, that's a huge benefit because you're not forgotten about. And, uh, and to be invited to a networking event such as Sundance, I mean, what a thrill. And was Sundance very much on your radar as someone that you wanted to get involved with? Yeah, definitely. And, we, and um, so the, it's like for Scrapper, for example, we had our trainees on there. We had a participant from our Film Forward program. So to be here, see the film in action and see it tonight is just fantastic. And it, it just everything kind of marriages up, which is really nice to see. Absolutely. And um, Sharon, can you tell me, um, oh, actually, you've, you've answered that question. It's fine, <laughs> I can, I can add more. Uh, what advice would you now give to someone looking to progress in their, in their careers? So I would say is if you're sort of ready to step up, start, because when I was a runner, I was kind of like getting ready to step up. So chat to the people who are above you, ask them if they can give you some advice, see if you can help them out with certain stuff, like let's just say doing background or doing timings and things. And then I would also say is just also do some of the screen skills sort of courses as well. So you've got like your resilience training that you're also doing um, to sort of help you toughen up. And you've also got your... Um, <laughs> I love that tough enough. Well, yeah, yeah, it's because it's a tough industry out there. And you've also got to do, like, there's a management training going on yeah. as well, in order to speak to people, and there's, like, bullying training and, con and conscious bias. Yeah. So always make sure you're progressing your skills. But make sure you're in contact with people that you've worked with and let them know that you're ready to step up so that your seconds or your thirds or people above you, that you're ready for someone to give you a chance. And it's so important, isn't it, Celia, to sort of demystify people at the top? Yes, yeah. definitely. And, and that's why, like I said, we're so industry-led that we do invite people back to be part of our programmes and part of um, what we want to kind of put out there and to work with people coming into the industry as well and offer that advice. And many people come back, they do masterclasses with us, they are part of the training and how we, how we create it and how we develop it. So, yeah, definitely. And um, you're going to be here for the whole weekend, yeah. so people can find you. Like, yes, yeah. we've got colleagues throughout the whole weekend. Uh, we, we'll be wearing these tags that you can join, and you can buzz into our website, um, which has a vast amount of information, I will say that. Um, but it is a fantastic place, and if you, it's great when you know where you want to go. If you don't, we also have resources for that as well. Um, if you just know that film and or HGTV is where you want to go, we've got those kind of those e-learning that you can do to kind of navigate yourself, navigate your thoughts, and give you those kind next steps as well and other than scrapper you know what other things have you been involved in you know have you we in film are across so very independent films we work all the way up to the studios um we 
it is a it is a complete range, um, and it's really really fantastic. And we tell our trainees that when they're on the program to work on those different films as well, because it is so different and the experience that you get from each one, the people that you meet, um, the role that you do, even though you'll be the same role, is completely different. So we really really encourage it. But um, yeah, we've worked with some fantastic films that have gone on to win awards, and we we really help to champion them from from Screen Skills and our platforms. I think. When I, when I did my placement, I went to Ireland, Northern Ireland, Republic of Ireland, and that was such a great opportunity because I got to see how an international sort of like different country, how they do things compared to how we do things in the UK. And I was so lucky because the producers, we had uh, one producer who already won several times at Cannes, another producer he'd done once, the Oscar, yeah, and there was an, and the other producer had done sort of like high end, I think he'd done like top boy and stuff. So a really high caliber and you could just chat with him. It was so lovely, so giving. And because you're sort of learning, people are willing to help you. And that's that's the beautiful thing about being on Trainee Finder is that they know, they know you're learning. So they'll give you advice and you can just say whatever, whatever you want and they'll, they will really pay attention to you. Do you think that one of the things that people are most frightened of doing is reaching out for help? Because sometimes when you do it, there's so much help there, isn't there? Yeah, and it's, it's very... We talk about it because we, we actually did the interviews this year for our AD, AD trainees. And it's that really interesting thing of, you know, we do the, the interviews and one of the questions is, why do you want to do this? And what's your expectations? And they just don't know. And there is... And I know there are pages on our website that, say, that could help with that answer. So it is just... I would... Anyone looking to get in... Do you really got to have to try yourself as well? There are people that are there to help, but knowing where you want to go and knowing um, where your passion lies is the first thing, and then reach out to, to where people can help. And, and yeah, we're here this weekend. We have a website. We have social media. Do reach out. Um, we do promote all our programs. So we run training, events, everything, and all across the UK. And it's just kind of going onto the website and seeing what works for you. I actually had someone who cold called me, actually. He just graduated um, from London but he's Irish, and he had sort of looked at my details and knowledge, cold called me, and because I had done a placement in, our, in Ireland with Screen Skills, I was managed to give the contact details of the ADs that had worked there, and because I'd already worked on some local stuff in London, I'd already g I managed to give him the details, and I was so impressed with the initiative that he took, that he went there and he called, it's like, and he was so polite, and he's like, I'll owe you a coffee. I said, well, next time I'm in, like, let's meet in person, because I've never met him. It was just over the phone. So people are there to help. We've all been there. We all have dreams. And we want to help you achieve yours as well. And so don't be scared about reaching out because we're here for you. Yeah, and sometimes like, you didn't know that you wanted to be an AD. It's like I often think, how does anyone get good at shop putting or something like that? Because, you know, I wasn't taught that in school. I don't know. You know but you look at it on telly and you think, I want to be a shop putter or I want to be a whatever. I want to work in film. But you don't know that there's an AD. You don't know a job like that even exists. Do you know what I mean? And it's like, just, yeah. I think the most important thing that I got told is to just apply for anything, get your foot in the door, and then chat with different departments. When I first started out, I was a production assistant, and I was like, I do, that was my first, I thought, I do not want to do this. So I got chatting with the AD people, and because I wanted to be on set, and I just chatted with different departments, but I knew AD was for me, and luckily I had an opportunity to do that through Screen Skills, and I thought, yeah, this feels like home. But don't be scared about changing careers or changing different departments. That happens. That's quite common. And if you just tell the other department you're interested in that, especially when you're starting out, we will give advice and we will do recommendations. So th there's no shame in that. Fantastic. And what are you most looking forward to this weekend, other than talking about screen skills all weekend, obviously, because it is brilliant. But yeah, is there a film that you're thinking like that is a standout? I mean, what kind of films do you make, Sharon? I always like drama, but Scrapper seems really good. I, I do like childhood stuff and sort of like kids things. So I was like, yeah, I'm excited about watching that. But it's, again, it's just exciting about networking, chatting to different people. With, I mean, having Sundance is such an honor. I never thought, you know, it's like such a huge prestigious thing. And it's such a privilege to be here and meet people. And also just find out more about people. And if we can help, I'll help. And what about you, Celia? Yeah. I would say exactly the same. It's, yeah. it's, it's, we are, we're here to, to listen to people and seeing where we can help them. Um, and you don't think that just because something that we didn't talk about today might not fit with you, come and talk to us. And it could be that, that we are currently running a, a program or we're thinking about doing it and we can give you more information about it as well. But yeah, do, do come and chat. Please do seek out Celia and Sharon if you've got any questions. And I can't thank you both enough thank for joining you. me today. Thank so you. a huge thank round of applause, please, everybody, for Celia and Sharon from Screen Skills.
We'll be back in two minutes. Thank you. Everyone. Welcome back. Settle down, everyone. Settle down. We have now got Charlotte Regan and Theo Barraclough, director and producer of Scrapper, which is our opening night film this evening, and the Grand Jury Prize Dramatic at Sundance. Can I have a huge round of applause, please? <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me, both of you. Um, I'll start with Charlotte. If you could just sum up, because we are live streaming to YouTube and Facebook and Instagram, and, but you don't need to think about that. <laughs> but if you could sum up for all the people watching what Scrapper is about. To be honest, Theo is much better at <laughs> summing up the film, so I'll let him smash that. He does a sick synopsis. Go on, go on. Do you want a synopsis? Or? A, a six. A sick, quick synopsis. <laughs> Scrapper is the story of a 12-year-old girl called Georgie who lives in London and uh, is sort of living by herself, self-sufficiently. Uh, her parents aren't anywhere to be seen when the, the film begins. And uh, sort of contrary to what you would normally think, she's kind of quite happy about that. She fills the room with magic, um, or sorry, her, her house with magic. Um, and 
she steals bikes with her best friend Ali and they kind of pay the bills and get by and keep social services off their, off their tail that way. And then about 20 minutes into the film, her dad, Jason, who she's never met before, who left when she was a baby, appears on the scene and demands to be part of her life. And she doesn't really know what to make of that. She's sort of like an old lady in a young girl's body, partly because she's had to look out for herself. And um, he's like a, a boy in a man's body because he's been running away from responsibility all of his life. So they're at kind of opposite ends of the spectrum. They're an odd couple and they have to kind of figure it out. I mean, it's such a great premise for a story. How, how did it come to you? And did you work together on developing the story? Um, I have uninspiringly can never remember how it came to me, um, which is an absolutely great answer always. Um, but yeah, we worked on it together for like maybe three years, something like that. So lots of dodgy, dodgier versions of the script before this but, one. But all with the support of Sundance. You've got a great Sundance sort of allegiance, haven't you? Like they've been so helpful. Could you tell us about how you got involved with them? Yeah, uh, I did the Sundance Ignite program a few years ago. Um, and yeah, they just are an amazing community of people to be a part of. You know, I met like some of my best friends on the program and filmmakers where we were all at a similar place in our career and have kind of grown together and still use each other to bounce ideas back and forth off. Um, and yeah, it was a very like incredible program that I was lucky to be a part of, mostly because of Toby also, who works at Sundance, who is the best human in the world, but is not here, is he? No. I don't but think so. Legend. No. Who, is, who is Toby? What does he do? Is Toby's he the Ignite gem. program? If he's Ign yeah. Ignite, he should be here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is Toby here? He couldn't come. Oh, what a shame. Oh, okay. But there, but there is an Ignite. There's lots of Ignite stuff, isn't there? So if you're a new filmmaker, if you want to know about films, the, the whole Ignite program this, here in Sundance London is amazing. And Scrapper is a free screening for the Ignite program, isn't it? And you're going to be doing an interview, another interview. <laughs> And um, yeah, so d definitely come down and get involved because that is the thing to do if you want to get ahead, especially in Sundance. Sundance are, are so helpful at getting you into Sundance. Yeah, yeah. I mean, is that your experience, Theo? Well, I have a slightly different journey to, okay. to Charlie. Um, I'm, not, I'm not quite the same kind of golden child that she is. Um, so actually, my, my experience of Sundance was um, the first time was, was submitting Scrapper when it was finished. Um, so that was the beginning of it all for me. And, and so when we went out there to Park City, that was pretty magical, as, as a lot of people often say. Um, and yeah, I hope to go back there many, many, many times in the, in the future. So is this your debut film as well? Yeah. Feature? So your debut feature was accepted by Sundance, which in and of itself is an incredible prize, and then won the Grand Jury Prize. Yeah. It's all downhill from here. <laughs> <laughs> That's what people keep on telling me, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's because we're all just so jealous. <laughs> but how brilliant. And, and what an incredible endorsement for what Sundance does and for your creativity as a... I mean, do you, would you say you were very much a partnership on this, on this film? Or were you working with Charlotte and it's, it's all Charlotte's vision? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll let Charlie sort of answer the second part of that question. Yeah. But uh, I think, yeah, we do work very collaboratively together, probably more than most producer-director combinations. That was always the way it, it started, way back in 2018 or whenever it was. Like, we, we've always worked in a way where Charlie would help me with some producing stuff. I would not necessarily help her with directing stuff, but, like, <laughs> try and give, you know, enough support to make her, you know do her best work. Um, but yeah, no, it, it feels very collaborative and, and that feels like it's in keeping with the, the Sundance spirit as well, which I think is, you know, maybe why Charlotte's had such a, an amazing sort of relationship with the festival is it's kind of that indie collaborative spirit that, um, that they offer, I guess. And Charlotte, did you feel that you found a sort of kindred spirit who really understood you in Theo? 
but no, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I didn't. He was I just did. a producer that happened to be around. No, no, <laughs> the top, top five favourite humans in the world. And now we live two streets away, two streets away, so it's no, already when we lived half hour away, I would go around on a Sunday before the shoot and he'd be like, you're here again, are you? To talk about the film on a Sunday. So two streets away is like no escape, yeah. I love it. And how was it bringing Charlotte's imagination to, to life? Like the, 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 I mean, I won't give anything away, but there's, there's just so much creativity in there. I mean, did you draw pictures together or like, do some modelling? <laughs> I'm not much of a picture drawer. Okay. Um, that's an example of like Charlie being the director and me being the producer. Um, but yeah, there's lots of the aspects of the film there was definitely a moment in the process, probably around COVID, where we made a decision to really push the style of the film and do things that maybe aren't normally expected in a social realist piece of British cinema. Stuff like talking spiders and magical towers of bike parts, that sort of thing. So at that point we did start, and it was like a daunting thing as well. Like the, you know, I remember the first draft that we sent to BBC and BFI with talking spiders in, we were like, this might be the end of the road, but um, luckily they they stuck with us. Um, so I love the talking spiders. <laughs> I love them, and I love spiders, and I love seeing them in a positive light in a film. These are lovely spiders. Well, because you feel like they're often shown in a negative. They light. are uh, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> but there's a great story behind the spiders as well. Like, weren't they all sleepy? Like, you had to get them specially. <laughs> Uh, yeah, <laughs> like RSPCA territory, I think, the sleepy spiders. But they, um, were, they were properly looked after, weren't they? they were, am I getting this completely <laughs> wrong? Should I drop the spider talk? I think mi minimal spider deaths on set, for sure. So <laughs> they were like... And they, they all had names. Death. Did they have names on the boxes that you bought? No. no names, sorry. I take that back, no names. Maybe best not to talk about the spiders. The spiders are okay. sounding more dodgy than what we but talk anyways, about. <laughs> they're, well worth, they're well worth it. And I'm sure you said that... That they were beautifully handled by a carer who just had had frozen them slightly, and they were a bit sleepy. But anyway, that's yeah. <laughs> the, the the technique was freezing the spiders, and then they would wake up from like the cryogenic freeze, <laughs> uh, which apparently is like you know best practice, but seemed a bit harsh to us. But, you know, fair enough. Who are we to say? Exactly, exactly. But tell me about your. Let's move on, moving on from the spider cast to the real cast because they were quite something. You've worked with non-actors. And how was that? How, you know, how did you find them? What, you know, what was the process of, did you definitely want to work with non-actors? Uh, yeah, it was definitely kind of our preference uh, for the two uh, young leads. Um, and to be honest, it was mostly down to Shaheen, who's like an incredible casting director and particularly like with like young actors, she just really like knows how to find legends and then knows how to support them throughout the process and afterwards as well. So I think without her, we would have struggled. Um, but yeah, they were, they were legends. They were happy every day unless, unless Lola hadn't eaten breakfast before like 10 a.m. Then she was moody, but mostly very joyful and happy on set, yeah. And, and how was it working with um, Harris, who is an actor, and combining the two, I mean, I know that he was, you were saying earlier, he was really very generous and it all just felt like a lovely family, really, and that you all worked really hard to make the kids feel as comfortable as possible. Yeah, that was a big part of, like, the process of casting the role of Jason was really making sure that that actor understood that it was the little girl's story first and foremost rather than the, the dad's story, which is quite a big ask from... Because that was always going to be the only named actor in our film really um, so we were looking for um, someone who could understand that and appreciate that and sort of see the opportunity and Harris was that way from from the very beginning I mean me and Charlie had worked with Harris before then so there was a bit of a relationship there and we kind of knew that that was the case with him but um, as soon as he came in and did a few improv sessions with with us and, and with Lola it kind of clicked into gear very easily and and Lola in the in the run up to in the run up to filming and during the casting process she was very shy like she she really like you know she shut down to be honest with you like with new people and didn't want to uh, perform 
And so always the, the, the fear, particularly from a, well, for, for both of us, I guess, was like, what's going to happen when you put a camera on, on her? What's going to happen when you put a big movie star opposite her? And, um, and Harris was amazing with that. Like, he just made her feel incredibly comfortable. And, but to be fair, also Lola deserves a huge amount of credit. Like, every, every moment where we thought, like, oh, this might be a step too far, she would... She's very clever, Lola. Like she, she understood when it really mattered. Like she, she'd mess around when it didn't matter so much, and kind of like test our boundaries a little bit. But then when the when it really mattered, she would click into gear, and she was a complete pro, more of a pro than us, to be honest. And Charlotte, you were saying that she brought so much to the shoot that you think that she's actually going to make a brilliant director one day herself. Did she, did she change anything? Did she change the script? Did she say, no, I'm not saying that? Or? <laughs> I think she'll be great whatever she decides to do. Um, I think we'll like, never meet a human as great as Lola ever. Even though we went to Legoland with her recently and she was like quite negative about Legoland, which is a mad character flaw. Um, but yeah, she, she would for sure, like we would often let them improv at the end of scenes so she could like bookend a scene with her own chat. And I think we've probably got like reels and reels of footage where she just would not stop talking for ages and would, <laughs> and would really encourage Alan to go into a mad place of improv as well. So she's a big influencer on set and yeah, can talk rubbish for hours for sure, but great entertaining rubbish. I would love to watch just like 10 hours of Lola chatting for I sure. I was just about to say, I'd like to see the scrapper outtakes, please. That's a there is actually going to be a couple of pieces that go out where you get a sense of that. Uh, oh, brilliant. Where like Lola is showing you around the set of Scrapper, so you'll get a, a sense of that closer to the theatrical release. And are you going to be here for the whole weekend? Are you going to be able to enjoy the Sundance weekend as, as well as just working today? As, I mean, even though it's a brilliant thrill to have your UK premiere tonight mm -hmm. with all your friends and family, you know, are, are you going to be able to relax and enjoy Sundance? Are you going to see any of the other films? I'm, I'm actually going to Athens on Sunday. Oh. So. <laughs> <laughs> I will be here and enjoying it until then, and then I have to go and take a holiday with my wife. So that's fair enough. <laughs> Is, are there any films that you'd, you'd like to uh, that you're going to be trying to take in? Yeah, I'm going to go and see Talk to Me oh, tomorrow, brilliant. which I'm very excited about. Um, at the moment, that that's it for me. I want to try and see the Anthony Bregman uh, producers talk because I'm a big fan of him, uh, but I think that might clash with one of our screenings tomorrow. So we'll. We'll wait and see. Charlie's got tickets to literally every screening between now and the end of Wendy Sunday. the legend, <laughs> free tickets from Wendy, absolute legend. Every <laughs> film is <laughs> back to back. Yeah. That's so, and it's a, I mean, it, you're just excited to see it all, basically. <laughs> yeah, every, every free ticket that Wendy offered, I was like, yes. Graciously accepted. <laughs> I'm the same. I just I don't have anything that I couldn't say. I am so looking forward to that necessarily because I'm so looking forward to all of them. If you know what I mean. So because it is just the benchmark of quality. It, it, if if it's curated by Sundance, I absolutely 100% know I'm going to love it. Yeah. You know. So um, thank you both so much for joining me today. And and just to just to wrap up, you know, like uh, how is it to be both of you? Your feature debut. You've won this prize. You've got your. Um, UK premiere tonight, all your friends and family coming. How, how, how can you explain how that feels? Or is it, do you just take it in your stride? Or? I was saying just a minute ago, it's, um, it, I got married a couple of months ago, and uh, it's weirdly similar to the feeling of like building up to your wedding. Oh, congratulations, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I probably wouldn't say that to my wife, but uh, it, there's a strange like feeling of like such, such a big moment and so many people that you care about being in the room who are so excited for you and want the best for you, and that's kind of like quite daunting and, and full on, but I mean, what a privilege and what an amazing thing to have with your first film, so yeah. thank you to Sundance, thank you to Picture House, it's, it's incredible. Charlotte, did you want to add anything? No, obviously very excited, but I try not to think about it too much. So. Fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> Theo Ladies, does it for us. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please give a huge round of applause to Charlotte and Theo. Thank you, Thank you so much. <laughs> we'll be back in just one minute.
welcome back everyone. I just want to say another huge thank you to Charlotte and Theo. That was just was great. So good. So yes. good. Oh, Ooh. sorry. <laughs> I'm too loud. Yeah. And welcome back, Wendy. I can't stay away, Flick. Oh, it's no. been such a good show. Oh, I'm so happy. I'm so happy to get it started and oh. to get it rolling and for everyone joining. You know, thank you so much, everyone, for, for being here yeah. and out there in um, internet land as well. Yeah. So, um, Wendy, you're going to flag up a few Yeah, amazing... I'm just going to mention a few things that I know might still have a ticket available because, you know, I think it's frustrating to come up here and talk about things that are totally sold out. So I'm not going to say the sold out ones. You can always check at the desks to see if there's any returns on a sold out show. But you've already mentioned you're gonna be talking to Frederick Chang and Beth Ann Hardison from Invisible Beauty. And this, I feel embarrassed. I didn't know Beth Ann's story before, but what a legend. She is here with us. They, if you see two really fashionable people walking around, it's Beth Ann and Frederick. He also made Dior and I and, and Halston, so he's, a legend in that fashion documentary world. Beth Ann is a co-director and the star of the film. They're here. A lot of Beth Ann's fashion -y friends are going to be at that screening on Friday. And so, she is friends with some incredible yes. so fashionistas. It's just yeah. such a good film and such an amazing life she's had. I think there's, because we moved the Doom generation, we were talking about it a lot, we moved that into screen one because it sold out so quickly, we wanted to give more people the chance to see it. So I think there's some tickets, a few tickets, not many, left for Doom Generation. Greg Araki's gonna be here, Kim's gonna be talking to him. That's that is gonna be, such a treat, it's, such a treat. And I, I've realized, I don't think I've seen Greg's director's cut of the film. I don't know if I'm gonna be allowed to sit in a film, but if I, if I am, I'm gonna be sat in the back. Um, Ira Sachs is back uh, with Passages amazing film um sort of a love triangle we're gonna have ben wishall here is he yes he's here tomorrow yeah friday i'm getting my days straight incredible performance and from because ben of the demand for that film we've just opened um a second screening on friday night so just to let people know that there's a new passages screening ira's here ben wishall's here such an amazing acclaimed film, big hit at Sundance, Utah. And just one more to mention, uh, which is Fairyland. You mentioned Andrew Durham, the director. Yes. Is going to be here all the way from California. He's, he's going to be chatting lovely. with you. He's yeah, he's so, so nice. So great to chat to. And yes. this is just a really beautiful, special father daughter story, but with political context. Um, oh my gosh, I cried. I love this film. It's on, again, it's big screen one. Um, so big screen one for Fairyland tomorrow at four. So if you can maybe bunk off work early, come to see Fairyland because not only is Andrew gonna be here and his producer, Megan Carlson, Amelia Jones, everybody loves Yay! Amelia Jones Amelia from Coda. Jones so That's Amelia Jones exciting. is gonna be here tomorrow. Yeah. So those are just, every film is great, but if you haven't booked up all your films for tomorrow, those are some four really good ones I recommend. Brilliant. Wendy, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for joining live from the studio, the very first show. Can I have a huge round of applause for all our guests, please? Woo! Thank you for watching out in the internet land, and we will see you again tomorrow at four. Thank you.